Hey there, AP Hug Team. This is Sanchez, ready to kick off our next unit, which is going to dive into the world of culture. And we're going to go ahead and start things off with a flip lecture looking at some introductory terms for religion, Chapter 6. All right, just a friendly reminder, remember at this point of the game, you should have your geo logbook open. Of course, uh, for the semester, the close of the semester, you have found hopefully a method of note taking that works for you, whether you're setting yourself up with three column notes, if you're setting up with Cornell notes, or again, maybe even trying to utilize a mind map strategy we used in class. Um, before we get into the lecture on religion, however, I put on the screen uh, the term culture. Because religion will go into our unit on culture, and I wanted to say a few words in terms of culture, because it can mean um, many different things to many people. I mean, historically, from the word um, culture actually comes from a Latin word that means to care about. So culture, again, we're talking about um, the ideas in terms of uh, material things that a group of people cares for, and also the beliefs, values, and characteristics that kind of define uh, a collective identity. So definitely religion is going to fall into that uh, culture aspect. Now the study of how cultures vary over time and space is called cultural geography. And cultural geographers are going to use techniques um, from other disciplines to really understand the spatial dimensions of how human cultures um, inhabit the world, world and of course again um, how we understand spatial interaction. Now on the screen right now in this particular section there's a couple things that I really want you to uh, sort of tune in as far as the big ideas. Um, first and foremost we'll have a discussion in, in chapter 6 it talks about religion and kind of the role of religion in society. You also are going to need to be familiar with the major world religions. So through the course of again your reading plus what I've arranged in the haiku modules over uh, winter break you get to explore each of our major religions, whether they be the universalizing religions um, or also ethnic religions will fall into that discussion. And then if you also look at your study guide, a big portion of um, College Board standards are going to have you to understand the diffusion of these major religions, uh, where they come from as far as the hearth, and how religions are going to change the landscape, and then kind of leading us closer to how also religion, which we can also kind of tie in when we get into our discussion of ethnic and political, how religious um, conflicts can lead to um, conflicts around the world. So that's kind of the last piece that will be tied into this religion section in key issue number four. Now I want to start off um, also when we start talking about religion, of course, we have to begin the discussion in terms of making sure we're respectful. Uh, religion can be very personal to a lot of peoples. And again, to understand that this conversation is meant to understand and appreciate uh, religion. And again, not necessarily to um, say one religion is doing it right or one religion is wrong. Uh, but again, as we're becoming um, geographers and, and citizens of the world and, and even reflecting in terms of developing new perspectives, part of being a geographer, um, to understand the role and the differences of religion and society. So I guess I want to also say that for many people, religion, I pr you probably could say more than any other cultural trait, defines um, who they are and how they really understand the world around them. Uh, because religion is tied to all aspects of uh, human culture and social systems, studying the geography of religion can help us understand everything from population growth, um, when we get to our discussion of international politics and government, the design and structures of cities. Um, so really religion will dip into um, most of our other our units. So on the screen right now, again, uh, a fa very famous uh, geographers wrote that religion, quote, system of beliefs and practices that attempt to order life in terms of culturally perceived and ultimate uh, priorities. Um, I would definitely say that religion uh, is uh, something that's created to help humans and people in general to try to understand and try to uh, navigate what it means to be um, a person in the world. Uh, religion is a binding force of society, and you could definitely say that religion serves as a, as a guiding course. It serves to try to help us understand uh, in terms of what is right and what is wrong. Um, <clears throat> a lot of religions talk about how 
uh, we should structure society in terms of what it means to be a good person um, and really just to understand our place here on, um, in this universe, what it means, uh, our life's purpose and so forth, how we interact with each other, how we interact with strangers. Um, so religion, again, um, it's kind of a broad concept, um, but we would definitely say that many religions have been adopted across cultural barriers and language boundaries. Now, religion itself manifests itself in many different ways. Um, so we've seen evidence across history and across the world, um, worship of souls, of ancestors, uh, and living or natural objects, um, belief that certain living people or persons can possess capacities granted by supernat uh, supernatural powers, um, the belief in deities or um, gods or goddesses. Um, so religion definitely has a powerful role in society. And we could also again tie it as we introduced earlier on culture, religion's role in society also can have effect in terms of what we see or perceive the material um, aspects of culture. For example, uh, modes of dress that's acceptable. Um, we see foods that a person can or cannot allow to eat, uh, location and structure of houses. So religion has a very powerful role in society. All right, so some introduction when we're studying religion, uh, we need to be familiar with the terms on the screen right now, which is monotheistic religions, uh, poly polytheistic religions, and animistic, uh, animistic uh, religions. Um, so we can see, despite there's a variety of religions found around the world, which we'll be looking at through maps and um, various activities, <clears throat> most we can necessarily classify in three main categories. So if we're talking about monotheistic religions, mono is the prefix that means one. Um, so we're talking about the worship of a single deity, if we're talking about God, if we're talking about Allah, if we're re referencing the um, Islamic faith. We also have poly. So poly means multiple. So polytheistic, we're talking about more than one deity, even you know thousands of gods and goddesses like we see in the Hindu faith. And animistic is centered in the belief that inanimate objects such as mountains and, and rivers and trees, um, they possess spirits or an energy that should be revered and respected, kind of more of that Mother Earth or, or Mother Nature type of perspective. So it's interesting that throughout much of human history, virtually all religions were either uh, one of these three main categories. All right, here's a little graphic to take a look at um, that kind of introduce some of the major categories or types of religions, whether they be on this particular one. We can see our universalizing religions over here, or Christianity. And then we also have over here on this side our ethnic religions. Um, so we can definitely see Christianity is one of the largest uh, groups or religions that we see across uh, the world. Uh, but definitely on the rise, we have... Um, uh, Islam. Um, Islam with the Sunni and Shia uh, uh, necessarily their population is increasing due to their birth rate. And so we see that Islam today around the world is one of the fastest growing religions. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about the differences between universalizing religions versus ethnic religions. Um, the three main universalizing religions are Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. And each of those religions attempts to be global in its appeal to all people, wherever they may live, and not just the ones to in a set location. So if we're talking about universalizing religions, we're talking about the fact in many cases um, that these religions are going out to actually seek people to join their religion. They're trying to get converts. Um, so that's one of the reasons why that these religions um, are large and expansive. They're trying to get out there. They're trying to spread the world, uh, spread the word, I should say. And really, it's open that anyone can join. Now, on the flip side, obviously, ethnic religion, um, particularly these religions belong to one particular ethnic group. And they do not necessarily go out and try to seek converts. Um, we see that they primarily just try to obviously support um, their own ethnic group and their own religion. So you can't really become a part of the religion unless you're kind of born into that religion. 
So they're really not that concerned of going out and trying to make new people uh, practice their religious faith. All right, well, whether we're talking about universalizing or ethnic religions, part of chapter six is also to help us understand the diffusion of religions. So we can definitely connect to the fact that religions diffuse through uh, two different ways. We can talk about expansion diffusion, so both contagious or hierarchical, um, and then another type of diffusion we could say religion involves uh, relocation diffusion. So with either of these, the leaders or the followers interact with the people, or if we're talking about universalizing, like we just mentioned, they're trying to convert um, people to join their faith, um, and that will lead to conversion or possibly that religion um, spreading further. So spatial interaction occurs because of migration or missionary efforts, or even in some case, we're talking about conquest, going back to even um, period of Spanish exploration or, or um, we're talking about missionary um, drive. So the diffusion of religion is going to be important to both of our, our types of religions. So let's go ahead and uh, take a little break and let's uh, take a look at some diffusion in action. just a brief introduction with some key concepts for religion. So we're going to go ahead and start digging into the module and we will see you on the haiku boards. Talk to you or see you guys soon.